I tried a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Soul Silver, but all of my encounters and every other trainer was completely randomized, meaning that any trainer could have any Pokemon. But what makes this challenge so hard is that it's a Nuzlocke. In a Nuzlocke, if a Pokemon faints, it's dead forever, and I can only catch the first randomized Pokemon per new area. The rest of the rules for this playthrough are on the screen and description down below. Let's get started. Now the first step in this challenge is picking up a starter. All Pokemon in this challenge have a similar strength to their non-randomized counterparts, so for example, Lance's Dragonite will turn into something with a similar BST. The only exception are these starters who are Aggron, Poliwhirl, and Staraptor. These guys are too overpowered right now, but I'll pick up Pi the Aggron for later. Still, I do have to use Pi in the first randomized rival fight. This random character's first and only Pokemon is a skunk, so you guessed it, it's absolutely no match for a fully evolved Aggron and is taken out by a few mudslaps. After getting Pokeballs from Lyra, I pick up Pi's replacement, Germany the Starly, who is a decent encounter this early in the game with Wing Attack. Germany is not the only encounter, however, as Italy, China, Serbia, and Egypt join the team, and you can too if you subscribe to the channel. With that, it's time to box Pi, who's already had a pretty good run. Take a long look at him, because that's the last you're ever going to see him. I actually completely forget about his existence. This is perfect because I have 5 Pokemon against Faulkner's 2 Pokemon. He leaves with a Starly of his own, so Germany's gonna have to go ahead and fight his cousin. Germany's level difference means that he outspeeds and connects with a wing attack, which barely leaves Starly alive as he goes for a growl, lowering my attack. It's not like it matters because a second wing attack picks up the KO. Faulkner then shows me Delcaddy, and normally when you think of Delcaddy, you don't think of how scary this thing is. But trust me, this thing is a monster. From there, I go for 4 quick attacks as Delcaddy misses Sings. Eventually, Delcaddy does connect with a Sing, and things are not looking good. Delcaddy then proceeds to slap Germany, which is completely justified when you miss a move 3 times in a row. Germany still snoozes as Delcaddy then goes for another double slap on the following turn, which hits twice. Germany then proceeds to stay asleep for a third turn as Delcaddy finishes off Sweet Germany, who tanks 2 more double slaps and marks the first death of the run. But hey, at least they get a free switch into China. This time, Delcaddy immediately gets off a sing, putting China asleep. Fortunately, Delcaddy misses a double slap as China wakes up and goes for a bite, bringing her into the red. Delcaddy decides enough is enough and connects with another sing. After taking a three turn double slap, China remains asleep. And then he tanks another set of double slaps on the following turn, which eventually brings me into the yellow HP range. This time, China's had enough, and he wakes up and goes for a bite, which gets the KO, winning me the battle and the first gym badge. The fact that Delcaddy was that annoying shows the power of the randomizer. I do need some encounters to replace Germany, so I pick up a Makahita and a Sparrow, both decent Pokemon. After this is some underwhelming Team Rocket stuff. Harkle and Silsilver are great games, but the Team Rocket plot is very underwhelming, so I will only touch on it a little bit. The only funny thing that comes out of this whole arc is watching an old man break his back and then stand up like it's nothing. I forgot to record this, but in the Slowpoke well, I pick up a Bonzi, which is a decent encounter. But that's only funny for a certain amount of time before I have to face Bugsy and his weird looking bugs. He leads off with Kingler and I with Egypt the Luxio, who's now evolved. Kingler gets off a Harden before I go for a Spark for around a quarter. After taking a Vice Grip, Egypt retaliates with a Spark, bringing Kingler into the Citrus Berry range. Kingler tries to be greedy before I get off a Spark doing massive damage, and it actually picks up the KO. After this, Rebugsy is his Poochiana, so I decide to stay in, and I go for a Spark, which actually gets the clean one-shot. I was not expecting that. And third and last is Bugsy's Silcoon, an actual bug, so I switch into Italy for his debut battle as this thing sets up a Harden. A wing attack then does decent damage as Silcoon sets up another Harden. It's not like it matters because a second wing attack is enough for the KO, winning me the battle and the second gym badge. I also love how gym leaders are referred to as poets in this game. After this is a quick rival fight with Not Ran. He leads off with Shelter and I with Egypt who outspeeds and does massive damage with a spark as Shelter connects with a supersonic. Luckily, Egypt breaks through and kills with a second spark. Not Ran's second Pokemon is a Swinub, so I pivot into Sudan on a Mud Sport. Swinub then goes for an Endor before a Rock Throw does half of the pig's HP. And then on the following turn, Swinub fails an Endor before a Rock Throw picks up the KO. 
Not Ran's third Pokemon is a Sunflora, so I switch into Italy as this thing goes for an Ingrain. A Wing Attack on the following turn does massive damage, and Sunflora goes for a Lead Shield, and thanks to the Ingrain and Lead Shield, Sunflora is at a pretty comfortable HP range. It's not like it matters because a Wing Attack is enough for the KO when you need the battle. As a reward, I pick up a Surskit and an Anorith, both of which are great Pokemon. However, neither join me in the fight against Whitney and her randomized team. Her first Pokemon is a Totodile, and I lead with the reliable Egypt. A Spark barely misses out on the one shot as Totodile lowers my speed with a scary face. Whitney then burns through a potion before a Spark brings Totodile back into the red HP range. Totodile then proceeds to get a flinch with a bite. Oh no, the trauma. Totodile then gets off a final bite before being KO'd by a spark. I have no clue how this thing even outsped. Whitney's sausage cow has been replaced by a scary crowbat, so I stay in to tank a bite, but it flinches. Oh no, the trauma. I tank another one before retaliating with a massive spark. From here, it's off to Sudan as Crobat just goes for another bite. And then Crobat connects with a Supersonic, but I break through and go for a Rock Throw to get the KO. Honestly, I'm surprised that Whitney doesn't have a third Pokemon, but given the strength of the mill tank, I completely understand why. After this is a segment I like to call Bad Encounters. Editor, play the clown music. Also, why are the Johto beasts just chilling? Aren't they supposed to be afraid of humans? Why do literal gods feel threatened by a mere child? I guess we'll never know. It's not like it matters because it's Morty time, and let me tell you, it was a blood bath. His lead Pokemon is a harmless Totodile, and I with Egypt. Since Totodile has become completely outclassed at this point, a super effective spark is enough to pick up the KO. Then, Morty's ace Kingdra comes in. I decide to stay in and tank a massive bubble beam before I fire back with a soft spark, but it gets the clutch paralysis. Yeah, I'm gonna need a sacrifice here, and Sudan is looking real sacrificial. He is immediately taken out by a bubble beam, but that's completely okay with me because I get a free switch into Italy who goes for a focus energy as Kindra goes for another massive bubble beam, making my move completely useless. I then fire back with a wing attack on the following turn, bringing the seahorse into citrus range as Italy is taken out by the bubble beam. This is not good at all. Just kidding, he lives with 3 HP, fires a wing attack, and is then taken out by a bubble beam. This does mean I get a free switch into Brazil, and he can go for a fake out for a bit of chip damage. This causes Morty to heal back up to full HP as I get off a massive set of arm thrusts, bringing Kingdra into the yellow HP range. Kingdra then decides to be annoying and set up an agility on the following turn before I can get another set of arm thrusts in. This time, the set of arm thrusts barely leave Kingdra alive, but for the first time, I actually get the clutch paralysis here. This means I can finally get the KO on the following turn with another set of arm thrusts, but we're nowhere near out of the woods yet. His third Pokemon is a Rotom, who sets up an annoying double team as I misclick with an arm thrust. Brazil then takes a shockwave before I finally come to my senses and hit a knockoff for a bit of damage. On the following turn, I have to tank another shockwave, which of course gets the critical hit. And of course, to make things worse, I miss my knockoff. Why does this always happen? This means I have to pivot into Egypt to tank the shockwave. It does way more damage than I expect, and I don't have another play here, meaning that Egypt, the MVP of the team, has to go down to a final shockwave. Losing Egypt like that is really unfortunate, but at least his sacrifice allows a free switch into China, who has to tank in uproar and then fire back with a bite, bringing Rotom into the yellow HP range. From here, all China has to do is tank another uproar and then KO with a bite, which of course activates Poison Point because this battle's already screwed to the enough times. Anyway, Morty's final Pokemon is a Corsola, which I didn't expect to be hard at all, but you know, Morty. I pivot into Serbia, who has to take the Rock Blast from Corsola, which does decent damage. And then on the following turn, I fire back with a Bubble Beam, but this thing has Recover. So after a while of Bubble Beams and Recovers, Corsola eventually KOs Serbia. At the very least, I get a free switch into Brazil, who cleaned things up with a set of arm thrusts, but the RNG in this battle screwed me over significantly, and I think it's just best to move on. Since we only have two Pokemon left, I put together a team of five random Pokemon I found in the box who are only here temporarily. Oh great, even in a randomizer, you can't escape the mill tanks. 
With that, we make it to Olivine City where some random man for us needs some medicine or something like that. I'm not completely sure. To be honest, I completely don't care anyway, so it's really not my issue. Show me a hula dance. Dog, this is a theater, not a strip. Oh, hey look, it's a Meganium. Meganium in this challenge is a very good Pokemon because it has Poison Point, which is a phenomenal ability. And then in a cave, I find a Drift Loom with Lightning Bolt, which is a phenomenal encounter. After picking up some medicine and relighting the lighthouse, we can go ahead and face Jasmine for badge number 5. Keep in mind, I messed up my level caps and am underleveled. Anyway, Jasmine loots with Baneri and I lead with Congo the Firo. Here's a dramatic recreation of events. <laughs> anyway, this thing does so much damage after switching to Austria, but then she switches out into her Buizel as I go for a Gust. On the following turn, I have to take a Pursuit before I go for another Gust, leaving this thing in the red. Jasmine heals up, and another Gust brings this thing into the yellow thanks to a crit. After taking a final pursuit, we can go ahead and pick up the KO with another gust, which baits in Shiftry. This isn't the best matchup, so I pivot into Brazil, which is useless because a whirlwind drags out India for his debut battle. I go for protect, but I was outplayed as Shiftry sets up a nasty plot. I then decide to pivot into America as Shiftry sets up another nasty plot. Luckily, all I have to do is tank a fan attack and then go for a poison powder to poison Shiftry. Shiftry then sets up another nasty plot as I set up a reflect. From here, I pivot into Congo on a feint attack, bringing her into the red HP range. This means it's lights out for the Congo, who is finished off by a Razor Leaf on the following turn. At the very least, Brazil is able to come in and go for a fake out on the switch for a bit of chip damage, bringing Shiftry into the Citrus range. After taking another Razor Leaf, Brazil gets the KO with an Arm Thrust. Brazil is seriously a phenomenal Pokemon, and I'm so glad I picked him up. This brings everything full circle with Beniri coming back in. They outspeed Data Frustration before I get the KO with a set of arm thrusts winning me the battle and the 5th gym badge. Oh look, it's a new mole. By the way, if you're excited to see Camerupt at its max potential, too bad, because even though he's on the team, he never actually makes a proper on-screen appearance. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would- With that out of the way, we can go ahead and face Chuck for badge number 6. He loops off with Quagsire and I get Brazil out there. Brazil is able to go for a fake out for a bit of chip damage and also get the flinch, which seems to be his go-to move. On the following turn, I hit a two-turn arm thrust for a bit of chip damage before taking a mud shot, which only does a little bit of damage, but it does lower my speed. From there, it's off to America to tank the incoming mud bomb for a little bit of damage. Given that America has less than 100 points of hit damage, I'm surprised he was able to tank the mud bomb that well. It's like it matters because on the following turn, a magical leaf is enough to pick up the KO. Chuck's last Pokemon is a Houndoom, which is a no-go, so I pivot into Brazil on a beat-up. I then hit a set of arm thrusts, which bring Houndoom into the Citrus Barrier range, meaning I have to get off another set of arm thrusts to take Houndoom out, winning me the battle and the badge. That was a nice change of pace, and it was quite easy. Although after this battle, I realized I messed up the level cap somehow, but that works out because the level caps in this game are pretty weird. The level cap actually decreases for the next gym, but I was incredibly underleveled anyway, so I don't really have to worry about EXP management. I also realized I definitely need new Pokemon because the team I have right now isn't the best. I start out by finding a Buizel, which is an amazing Pokemon because we don't have a water type. Then the next two encounters, Jude and Krabby, are really bad Pokemon that would die instantly. Luckily, I find a Bronzong after, which is an amazing Pokemon due to steel resisting a lot of the types in this game. This is important in a randomizer because you don't know what you're going to be facing. And then here's the encounter that you guys have all been waiting for, the shiny Gyarados, and it ends up being a... A Gloom. Uh, of course it's a Gloom. It has a decent shiny, I guess, but come on, this sucks. After that underwhelming shiny, we meet Lance, who is by far the coolest Pokemon champion in history series. Anyway, Lance and I go to the Team Rocket hideout, and there are a bunch of Electro that we need to KO. And because this is a new area, it counts as a new encounter. My encounter ends up being an Infernape, and with the fire and fighting type combination, it's an amazing Pokemon. With Infernape and Bronzong in hand, we can go ahead and face Price, the next gym leader. He leads off with an unknown and I with Japan the Infernape for his debut battle. A flame wheel does massive damage before unknown retaliates with a hidden power for a bit of damage. Since unknown really isn't a good Pokemon, I can just go for another flame wheel on the following turn to take the stupid letter out which baits in Hitmonlee. 
I go for a priority mock punch on the first turn as Hitmonlee goes for a mind reader. Honestly, mind reader might be the most useless move in series history, it really doesn't work. Another mock punch on the following turn brings Hitmonlee into citrus berry range and Hitmonlee has true one. I then go for another mock punch on the next turn which brings Hitmonlee into the yellow HP range as he just goes for a mind reader which come on is completely useless. I then decide to switch out into India as Hitmonlee continues to loaf. Hitmonlee tries to set up on me with a focus energy but is then taken out by an extra sensory on the following turn. Price's third and final Pokemon is a stun tank so I stay in and I have to tank a Night Slash. I then try to retaliate with an extra sensory, but then I forgot this thing is immune. I then take another Night Slash at 9 HP and then go for Hypnosis, but then I miss. This means I have to switch it to Yemen the Floatzel as the Skunk goes for a Night Slash. On the following turn, I go for a Surf doing 50%, but Stunt Tank gets a critical hit Night Slash to take Yemen out. Aw oh, man. I do get a free switch into Japan who goes for a flame wheel bringing stun tank in the yellow HP range as the stupid skunk retaliates with another slash. Stun tank then thankfully goes for a feint as I finally kill with a critical hit flame wheel winning me the battle and the badge. Honestly at this point losing a pokemon to a critical hit is kinda my specialty. After this is some team rocket stuff which is pretty underwhelming, the only cool thing to come from this is that we get to wear the team rocket uniform, but other than that this stuff is pretty easy. Oops, I accidentally lost Belgium, it's not like she was particularly useful. After this is another section of completely useless encounters, editor play the clown music again. That is, until I find Chili the Gabite. Garchomp is an amazing Pokemon, and this thing is a total beast. With that, I can go ahead and face Claire for the 8th and final gym badge. She leads off with Flygon, and I get Chili in there for his debut battle. Flygon immediately connects with a Supersonic, and I of course hurt myself in confusion. Chili on the following turn then tanks a massive Dragon Breath, which would have flat out killed with a crit, before he retaliates with a Dragon Claw. The Dragon Claw actually does do decent damage, but I do have to pivot into India on the following turn to avoid losing Chili. Claire does use a potion, so I do get Indian for free, which is always pretty nice to see. I then tank a Feint Attack before I connect with a Hypnosis, putting Flygon to sleep. As Flygon snoozes, India hits an extra sensory, doing around a third of Flygon's HP. Flygon then continues to take a snooze on the following turn as extra sensory number 2 brings the dragonfly into the yellow. Unfortunately Flygon does wake up but all he does is hit a faint attack and dies to a third extra sensory. Claire's second pokemon is a Sharpedo and I actually have a really good idea here. I pivot into Japan on a crunch. This means that Sharpedo will go for a water move on the following turn meaning I can then pivot into America who tanks the aqua jet and also gets poison point. This is known as pivoting and nuzlocking. Sharpedo then goes for a crunch before a magical leap is enough for the clean KO. Claire's third Pokemon after this is a Mothum, so I switch into Japan once again as Mothum camouflages. I then hit a flame wheel for around half of Mothum's HP as Mothum just whips a poison powder. This means a priority Mach Punch is enough for the KO. Claire's final Pokemon is an Aggron, so I hit a Mach Punch and then tank a takedown and then Aggron heals up with a Citrus Berry. From here it's off to Austria as Aggron goes for a takedown, which it's immune to. I then go for an ominous win for a bit of chip, but then Akron goes for a critical hit Iron Head to take Austria out, because well, why not? It's not like it matters because a close comic from Japan is enough for the KO, but still losing another Pokemon to a crit is really unfortunate. After watching Claire throw a temper tantrum, I go back to Critique City and watch the Kimono Girls decide if I'm worthy to catch the legendary Pokemon. They do when I get to watch this awesome cutscene. This was actually my first time playing Soul Silver, so I was surprised by how good this was. Anyway, Lugia randomizes into a Ho-Oh, which is hilarious. I catch them and name them Canada, but they won't join the team right away. On the way to Victory Road, I find a Croconaw, who is a great water type, and my final encounter in Victory Road is a Rapidash, which is a completely useless encounter. Speaking of Victory Road, we have one more fight against Not Ran. His lead Pokemon is a Roselia, and I get Japan in there who's able to go for a Flame Wheel to pick up the KO. Second from Not Ran is Poliwhirl, so I switch into India on a Bubble Beam. Poliwhirl on the following turn then Belly Drums, allowing me to kill with an extra sensory thanks to his stupid play. 
Notran's third Pokemon is a Heracross, and thanks to the defense drops from close combat, one extra sensory is enough to pick up the KO. Notran then chose me a second, very original Heracross, and since a close combo would kill all of my Pokemon, I let America take the fall. He does at least get off Poison Point, but then is taken out by a close combat. Thank you for your service. At the very least, Japan is able to come in and KO with a flamethrower. Thankfully, his next Pokemon is an Illumi, so one flame meal is enough for the KO, leaving Hariyama, but Japan isn't playing any games and gets the clean one-shot with a close combat which crits, winning me the battle. Still, it is unfortunate that we lost a Pokemon right before the final fights of the game. Speaking of final fights, I'm at the Pokemon League and I'm ready to face my hardest challenge yet. My final team consists of Japan the Infernape, China the Shellgon, Chile the Garchomp, India the Bronzong, Wales the Feraligatr, and Canada the Ho-Oh. Let's do this for the 10 fallen Pokemon. The first member of the Elite Four is Will. He leads off with Whale Lord, and I get China out there. From here, it's off to India as your mom sets up an amnesia. Whale Lord then sets up another amnesia as a whiff of hypnosis. After taking a brine, I miss another hypnosis. Whale Lord then outspeeds with another brine as I luckily connect with a confused ray. The stupid mom then hurts itself in confusion as I go for a gyro ball. I then pivot into Whalesy for Alligator to tank the brine, which tickles him. Whales being the savage that he is, picks up the KO with a critical hit crunch on the following turn. It really feels nice to not be on the receiving end of one of those. Second is Spiritomb, so I stay in and hit a crunch as Spiritomb sets up a nasty plot. I then go for an Ice Fang, which luckily gets the flinch. This means that a crunch on the following turn gets the KO. This causes Will to stand in Staraptor, who whiffs a takedown before I hit an Ice Fang for around half HP. Staraptor's next takedown leaves me in the yellow HP range, as a second Ice Fang is enough for the clean KO. Will then shows me Frostlass, so it's off to Canada as Frostlass sets up the Hail. Canada then tanks an Ice Shard before going for a Fire Blast to get the clean KO once again. Will's last Pokemon is another, very original Frostlass who connects with a Priority Ice Shard. Canada then takes Frostlass out with a Sacred Fire, winning me the battle. The most important takeaway here is that while RNG may screw you over, it's really important to remember good RNG. After this, I used two rare candies I found to evolve China into a Salamence, which is a phenomenal Pokemon. The second Elite Four member is Koga. He leads off with a Napoleon and I with China. This really isn't a good matchup, so it's off to Chile on a critical hit Aqua Jet. I then go underground for a dig as the Penguin misses a Brine. The dig on the following turn is enough for the KO as Pidgeot comes in. A Dragon Claw does more than half as a tank a Twister. It's really not like it matters because a second Dragon Claw gets the KO. Third is Claydol who sets up the hail. I go underground for a dig as Claydol goes for a power trick. This means they live a dig, heal the berry, and go for an ancient power which luckily doesn't get the Omni Boost. On the following turn, I go for a crunch to pick up the KO. Koga's fourth Pokemon is a Tangrowth, and thanks to the Intimidate, I have to switch into Japan, who tanks a Slam. Japan then goes for a Flame Wheel, bringing Tangrowth into the yellow. Tangrowth then proceeds to go for a Slam, which gets a critical hit, and thanks to the Hail Chip, Japan dies. Of course. RIP, out of all the deaths, that one hurts the most. At the very least, Canada is able to come in and KO Tangrowth with a Fire Blast. This just leaves a second Empoleon, so I switch into China on a Brine. Empoleon has a black sludge which chips at its HP every turn which I find hilarious. After this we begin to train brines and dragon breaths until I eventually switch into Chile as Koga uses a full restore. I then go underground for a dig as Empoleon misses a brine. I then KO on the following turn winning me the battle and the fight. RIP Japan, fly high. Third is Bruno who leads off with a Noctowl and I get China in. China goes up for a fly on the first turn as Noctowl misses an air slash. On the following turn, I miss my fly as Noctowl misses his air slash. I then go back up in the air for a fly as Noctowl misses his third air slash. Fly luckily connects his time and brings the owl into the red as I tank another air slash. Bruno then heals up to full HP as they go for a fly which low rolls as Noctowl connects with another air slash which of course gets the critical hit. For the final time, I go back up in the air and KO on the following turn taking the stupid owl out. Second is Weezing, who eats a Dragon Breath and turns into a Dragon type with Color Change. Weezing then retaliates with a Sludge for a bit of damage, and thanks to Color Change, a second Dragon Breath picks up the KO. Third is Agron, so I switch into Chili on an Iron Head with just little damage. I then go underground for a Dig as Agron misses an Iron Head. I then resurface on the following turn to get the KO, which baits in Milotic. I go for a Dragon Claw, which activates Poison Point as Milotic sets up a Safeguard. 
My Lodic actually doesn't have any attacking moves, so I few Dragon Claws pick up the KO. Last for Bruno is an Arcanine, so I switch into Wales on a Roar, which brings in China. I then switch back into Wales to tank the Extreme Speed. I forgot to teach Wales Surf, so we're stuck in the cycle of Extreme Speeds and Crunches. Eventually I get the Puppy in the Yellow, so I switch into India on an Extreme Speed. After taking a Fire Fang, an Extra Sensory barely leaves the stupid dog alive. This prompts Bruno to heal, but it does net me a free switch into Canada. A few extra sensories later, and the KO is mine, winning me the battle. The fourth and last Elite Four member is Karen. She leads off with a very original Empoleon, and I would chili the Penguin Killer. I go underground for a dig as Empoleon misses a brine. I then pick up the KO on the following turn, which brings in Gastrodon. I hit a Dragon Claw before tanking a Muddy Water, and thanks to the accuracy drop, I switch into China as Gastrodon sets up the rain. I then outspeed and go for a Dragon Breath as I tank a Muddy Water. I then go for a Crunch to get the KO, causing Karen to send in Bastiodon. I pivot into Wales here as Bastiodon goes for a block. A Surf does massive damage and a Barry restores Bastiodon's HP as he goes for an Ancient Power. Thankfully Karen doesn't heal and I pick up the KO with a Surf. Fourth is Surf Viper, so I stay in and I hit a massive Surf as the Viper thankfully misses a Glare. This means I can get the KO with a second Rain Boosted Surf. Last from Karen is a Lit Licky, so I once again stay in and hit a Surf doing little damage as the Lit Guy retaliates with a hard slam. I then go for another Surf, bringing Lit Licky in the yellow as I tank another massive slam. I risk a critical hit here and I go for a third Surf and I tank a slam which luckily doesn't get the critical hit. Since I'm low, I switch into India as Karen heals back to full HP. I then proceed to KO with a few extra sensories while staying at relatively full HP, winning me the battle and the Elite Four gauntlet. This means we've made it past the not-so-random Elite Four and are ready to face Lance. Lance could have anything, including some terrifying legendary Pokemon, but I have no choice but to proceed with the battle. He leads off with Starmie, and I get Chili out there, who is my go-to Pokemon. Starmie confuses Chili on the first turn, but he's able to break through and KO with a Crunch. Lance's second Pokemon is a Mamoswine, so I switch into Wales to tank the ice move, but Mamoswine just goes very missed. I then tank an Earthquake before hitting a massive Surf on the following turn. Mamoswine then goes for an Earthquake, which just leaves me with 5 HP before I get the KO with a Surf. Lance then sends in his first Pokemon, Regice, and I have no choice but to sack Wales. He gets off a Crunch and is then killed by an Ancient Power, which thankfully doesn't get the Omni Boost. I then switch into Canada, who outspeeds and picks up the KO with a super effective Sacred Fire. With half of his team left, Lance then sends in Jirachi, who outspeeds and goes for a Gravity before being melted by a Sacred Fire. Fourth is Stanler. Pause, I just want to take a moment and address Lance's team. So far, you've seen all these scary Pokemon, and then just a Stanler, which is pretty random. Anyway, Canada outspeeds and hits a Fire Blast as Stanler sets up a Calm Mind. It's not like that matters. And a second Fire Blast gets the KO, which just leaves Lance's final Pokemon, not that Entei. Entei swaggers Canada, but luckily he breaks through and goes for an extra sensory for a bit of chip damage. Entei then goes for a stomp as Canada hits himself in confusion. Entei's next stop then of course flinches me because, well, why not? On the following turn, a stomp leaves me with just 2 HP, but of course he gets the flinch on Canada. This means another stop KOs Canada, but hey, I do get a free switch into Chili who gets swaggered and goes underground for a dig. Entei then whiffs a flamethrower on the following turn, before a boosted dig, which is boosted by the 11 deaths of this run, well, mostly Entei's confusion, takes him out, winning me the battle, and the run. That was super fun despite the bad RNG and the 11 deaths of this challenge, which I think might be a record number. If you enjoyed this video, why not like and subscribe to the channel, it really helps me out. You should also follow me on Twitter for updates on my future Pokemon challenges, which will be in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Peace.